Hello everyone, this is Slyman. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to determine the sampling and resolution of your telescope and camera combination and talk a little bit about what sampling is and why it matters. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so I thought that I would keep things basic today and rather than show you the math on a whiteboard and the formula, uh, to use a calculator. And there's some really great calculators out there. One of them is Astronomy Tools. Uh, so that's where I'm going to go, uh, just https forward slash astronomy dot tools and navigate to this site. Now they have a lot of information on this web page and the calculators is where we're, we're going to be going and the CCD suitability calculator. Now before I go there, I would like to, you know, give them a little plug. This is a pretty neat site. They have a lot of different calculators and star charts and things that you can use. So yeah, it's a... A pretty fun little website. So anyway, CCD suitability is is where you'll want to go. And then I would encourage you to, to read through this. I'm not going to take the time to read it, but the math is is pretty easy on calculating this. But you know, hey, if you have a, a fun little calculator, might as well use it, right? So a few assumptions I'm going to make uh, when doing this is the seeing, I'm going to leave it as OK seeing. And for the purposes of this calculator, OK seeing is defined as being anywhere from two to four arc seconds at the uh, full width half maximum. Good seeing is one to two arc seconds and exceptional is a half arc second to one arc second. Now, exceptional seeing on planet Earth is fairly rare. That is why they build telescopes on mountaintops in Hawaii and Chile where it's dark and dry. So exceptional seeing, you know, where, where I'm located or where other amateurs are located, you're probably not gonna get this very often. Good seeing, you know, maybe you'll get it every once in a while depending on where you're at, but I'm gonna stick with okay seeing. So we're gonna assume two to four arc seconds. Um, and then I'm not using a Barlow or a reducer and we're assuming binning is one by one. Now I will change this later, but for now, for now, we're just going to leave that. So the formula is here for calculating the resolution of your telescope and camera system. And then on the left, you can input your camera if you know what it is and it's and it's on this list, you can just select that. Or um, if you have a custom scope, you know, like something you made, you can just put custom and put in focal length or you can come in here and find your telescope from the list if it is on here. I usually have the focal lengths of my telescopes memorized so I just type them in under custom but you know sometimes I don't so all right so the first example I'm going to use is uh, a Celestron Rasa 8 which has a 400 millimeter focal length and let's see uh, co a, a common CCD camera with that is the ZWO ASI 294 so I think that's 4.63 micron pixels, but let's just double check. Yep, 4.63, okay. So you can see that when I put in the 400 millimeter focal length of the RASA 8 and the pixel size on the ZWO ASI 294, that the image is slightly undersampled. So you want it in the green zone and it gives you the resolution of the system. It's 2.39 arc seconds per pixel. So You'll see a lot of people have pretty good results with the RASA 8 and the 294 MC, even though it is slightly undersampled. But if you're in OK seeing two to four arc seconds and your resolution is 2.39 arc seconds, you're doing pretty good actually. And, and the, for astrophotography purposes, you can't really tell a huge difference between slightly undersampled and well sampled. Yes, there is a difference, but it's not, you know, it's not massive. So basically sampling, what is it then? Well, oversampling is when your resolution is a little bit too good for the scene. And this will create more noise in your images. Uh, guiding errors will be extremely apparent when you're oversampled. So in general, you can live with undersampling, but oversampling is something you want to avoid. It's it's a pain. Uh, green is is perfect sampling. That's exactly what you want. And then as we come in here into the the yellow red side of things, this is where you get undersampling. Now, undersampling you can live with. Um, you can compensate for it a little bit with post processing and that sort of thing. And in general, most people really can't tell. So green to the slight yellow range is usually okay. 
So if you are using, you know, a Celestron Rasa 8 in this example with a 400 millimeter focal length, well, what can you do to, to get it into the green zone? Well, uh, you could you could use a ZWO183 camera that has a smaller pixel size. The pixels are 2.4 square microns. And you'll notice that that will get it in the green zone at 1.24 arc seconds per pixel resolution. That is a little bit better than the seeing allows for, but it is properly sampled. So that's actually right in the middle. So that's also why you see a lot of people use the 183 with the RASA 8. Now I do apologize in this video for people that are using like QHY cameras or others. I'm not as familiar with those models as I am ZWO. So I'm, that's why I'm focusing more on the ZWO cameras. But the principle of all this remains the same. So now we'll look at, at what binning does. Now, binning is the process of taking a square area of pixels and combining them into one pixel. So you're essentially lowering the resolution of your system. So two by two binning is going to take a two by two area of pixels or four pixels essentially and combine them into one. Three by three binning is going to take a three by three area of pixels and combine them into one. So three by three binning is going to take nine pixels and put them into one. So now watch what happens to my sampling if I two by two bin. You'll notice that it goes down because the resolution of the system goes down. When you're taking those pixels and you're combining them into one, you're lowering the resolution. So this actually can be really handy on uh, long focal length telescopes that you might be oversampling on just your normal one by one setting, but maybe if you do three by three binning, you're, you're perfect sampling. So I'll show you an example of that. Let's say, let's, let's use a, uh, I don't know, a Celestron eight inch telescope. It's roughly, or Schmidt cast grain. It's roughly 2000 millimeters. And notice with a, a 183 camera at 2.4 microns, you're very oversampled. But if I bin two by two, I'm still oversampled, my resolution went down. Three by three, I get into that green zone, but I'm still, you know, quite, my resolution is still 0.74 arc seconds per pixel, so it's still, it's still pretty high. So another thing you could do, well, instead of binning, maybe you swap out your camera to uh, 294 and then three by three bin. Okay, now we're right in the middle of where we want to be. And so that's where binning really is handy is when you use really long focal length telescopes and you don't wanna go buy a, a, a camera that has you know really large pixel sizes like 25 microns or, or 20 microns. You just wanna use the camera you have. Well, that's where binning is really, really helpful because you can reduce your resolution and still use the same camera. So for astrophotography, try to keep your sampling in the good range. And then, you know, if you start to drift into the undersampled range, that's okay. If you start to drift into the oversampled range, then you may want to consider binning to get it down because you don't want to deal with the guiding errors and the problems that come with oversampling. So that was with the Celestron Rasa 8 and a, uh, you know, an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain that was not reduced. So let's look at a few other examples. So a common telescope is a 80 millimeter refractor. And those typically have a 400 millimeter or a 480 millimeter focal length. Well, you can kind of see that the, the same thing happens. So if I go one by one binning with the ASI 294 MC with the 4.63 micron pixels, you'll see that I'm just barely, you know, inside that, that range here. Uh, if I go and use like a, a wide field camera lens, like a 200 millimeter lens, you'll see that I'm well undersampled. So kind of the rule of thumb is the smaller the focal length, the smaller the camera pixels need to be to get good sampling. So the longer the focal length, the larger the pixel size needs to fall in that good sampling range. Or you can do binning, or you can use a Barlow or a reducer and any kind of um, effects to, to get that down. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you another example real quick here. This is the Explore Scientific Comet Hunter. It has a focal length of 731 millimeters. So notice with the ASI 294 MC, with the 4.63 square micron pixel size, you fall perfectly inside that sample, uh, that sampling rate when you have okay seeing. 
And this is precisely why I bought the ASI 294 MC is because you fall perfectly in that sampling on the Comet Hunter. But on the Rasa, it also still does a good job, even though it's slightly undersampled. So if I put in 400 here, I'm slightly undersampled. So I bought one camera kind of as a do-all. Now, does it do everything? No, not, not necessarily, but for my purposes, it'll, it'll work just fine. Now, I'm also a graduate student right now. I'm about halfway through my master's degree, and we do our research primarily on asteroid photometry. And we use a 16-inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, and that has a focal length of roughly 4,000 millimeters or so. Now, the nice thing is, when you're doing research with a long focal length telescope, you actually don't need a really big pixel size in your camera because then you would way oversample and you don't want to do that when you're doing graduate research. You want the data to be very well sampled so that you get the best data possible, right? That makes sense. For astrophotography, it's not as important to get that sampling right in the middle. I mean, yeah, you want it to be well sampled, but if it's slightly undersampled, that's okay. So the research that I've conducted, uh, I use a 16 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And that has a focal length of roughly 4,000 millimeters. Now you can see with a modern CMOS or CCD camera, you know, that around that four micron range, you're massively oversampled. So what we do is I think our CCDs uh, have about nine micron pixel sizes, I think. But you can even see with nine, they're still oversampled. So when we are doing uh, research, we pretty much always been at three by three. So we take nine pixels on the CCD and we combine them to one and that drops the resolution to right where we want it. So uh, binning is really, really handy and that's why it's incorporated into almost every CCD or CMOS nowadays has the ability to bin and it's just really, really handy that way. So for scientific imaging, really, if you're wanting to do photometry or astrometry or any kind of you know research uh, in general the best practice is to get good sampling with all that being said i really use this website as a prospective buyer before i make a purchase of a telescope or a camera i always come in here and play around with it and it's really nice not to have to run the numbers through the formula by yourself every time because it just does it all for you really fun really easy so if you're looking at buying a camera or a telescope, I'd highly encourage you to come on here and play around with it and see what setup's gonna be best for you to get you into that green, well-sampled zone or you know, sl close to it, maybe slightly undersampled. But yeah, it's just a, a fun, neat website. Now, before I conclude, I just want to reiterate that although resolution of your, your camera system and your telescope is important and the sampling, it shouldn't be the only factor that weighs into your decision when buying a camera. So you definitely want to look at your sensor size. Are you interested in a full frame sensor or a crop sensor or one even smaller than that? Is your telescope system going to fully illuminate that sensor or are you going to get vignetting? Uh, is there blooming problems with your CCD or is there problems in illuminating all the pixels and getting a nice flat field? So there's a lot of factors that go into buying a CCD and this is by no means a CCD buying guide. It's just a friendly reminder that, you know, although it is important to look at your resolution and your pixel scale, there are other factors you need to consider when you buy a CCD camera. All right, well, I hope this video helped you understand image sampling a little bit more, especially in, in telescope and CCD camera systems. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. Clear skies and have a good one.